Have you ever defended somebody and then it turned around to just bite you right in the What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I'd like to do is take a look at the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And while you're at it, do not forget, go follow me on social media. I am at The Rewired Soul over on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I recently put up a poll, I asked questions. I love engaging with all of you beautiful people. So make sure you follow me, you give me like video ideas and feedback back and all that kind of good stuff and I mwah, I love it all right so um as form of like accountability on my end I try to make follow-up videos and correct myself if I was wrong and yeah I I defended Trisha Paytas in my video about her withdrawing from opiates and I was explaining how it's a dick move to accuse somebody of lying about opiate withdrawal but People have been messaging me and commenting and new stuff has come out. And I'm like, oh, oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Now, I do, I do appreciate the video that I made though. Like, I am proud of that video I put out because talking about it, talking about that subject, it gave me an opportunity to talk about recovery. I was able to talk about like medications when it comes to withdrawing from opioids, like Suboxone. I was able to talk about uh, medications like Suboxone, not Suboxone, but Vivitrol and Naltrexone, which are designed to help with cravings. I was able to talk about complete abstinence and not trying to use other substances to manage withdrawals. So make sure you go watch that video. It's linked up in the info card. A lot of good information in that video. But anyways, like I mentioned in that video, I was quite surprised. I was quite surprised at how many dislikes her video had, how many comments were accusing her of lying and manipulating. And like, from my perspective, I was like, listen, listen, okay. I know, I know this girl cries some wolf, but I don't think it's right to try to say somebody's lying about something like this, right? Like mental health addiction, or they're very serious subjects, especially when you look at opioid addiction, like, Tens of thousands of people are dying every single year. And it's something that's very personal to me because I'm a recovering opiate addict, all right? I'm coming up on seven years next month. And like a lot of the comments on my video were talking about how disgusted they were that she was lying about this and talking about how like, you know, she, you know, she's kind of exploiting like what opiate withdrawal is actually like. And, you know, she hasn't really been through it. And now this new evidence has come out, like I'm like, oh God. So anyways, anyways, the smoking gun actually came from Trisha Paytas' own mother. I uh, have been sick and I just like, I have to tell you though, um, I was feeling really bad a couple nights ago. I mean, I thought I was gonna die too, like Trisha, right? And I probably gave her what she's got. That's right, <laughs> Trisha Paytas' own mother, who also has a YouTube channel, just basically confirmed that she had the flu and she probably p passed that flu on to her daughter. And again, like, opiate withdrawal symptoms are very intense flu-like symptoms, all right? But there are very intense aches and pains. It is very difficult to get through without some type of assistance. Like aside from like the physical ailments of opiate withdrawal, there's a lot of uh, psychological withdrawal components such as like depression, anxiety, irritability, all sorts of things that can be attributed, you know, to like coming off of opiates. And yeah, it's just kind of messed up. Like something else people were talking about with Trisha Paytas quote unquote lying, which I didn't really give too much credibility to. They were saying that, you know, if you look at the interview she did with, you know, um, Perez Hilton or the interview she did with Tom Ward, like the dates did not line up from the last time that she used. And I'm sitting there, I'm just like, okay, that's what, drug addicts do like we lie about stuff like if any of you watch my other videos on suboxone one of the reasons i didn't take the medication when um i went through my opiate withdrawal was because i lied to the doctor i lied to him about how much i was using i lied about the last time i was using so like when people were pointing that out to me i'm like oh well you know like if you've ever been to a 12-step meeting chances are you've run into somebody who's lied about their clean date so i didn't really you know, give too much attention to that. But now looking at that situation, like it's messed up. Like 
One of the things that I'm constantly battling as somebody who's like a mental health advocate and I talk about it quite a bit on my channel is a, a conversation that constantly comes up is, is using your mental health issues or even mental health issues that you don't have, like, is it like trendy? Is it cool? Are a lot of people talking about it? And like, it's a yes and no, right? Like we're living in a time where more people are struggling with depression, more people are struggling with anxiety, more people are just suffering, right? And a lot of these symptoms lead to turning to substances. Like the three reasons people use alcohol or drugs is to get a feeling, to get rid of a feeling, or to have an escape. All right, so many people are struggling with mental health issues or addiction issues, but one of the issues that comes up is when we see a creator like Trisha Paytas who gets the flu and then gets the idea like, okay, well, I'm going to say that this is opiate withdrawal. I was using opiates and maybe she had a light withdrawal or she didn't record anything about it. And she, I don't know, I'm still trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. But then she uses that topic in order to, I don't know, I don't know what her motives were, to get sympathy, to manipulate the audience, to, I don't know, people are accusing her of, you know, just trying to get the attention of Jason, her ex, because she's been very vocal about that. I do not know what her motives were, but I can definitely empathize to anybody else who came across this video and was in her comments or my comments and saying how offended they were by this. Like, opiate withdrawal is hell. It is absolute hell, okay? It is one of the main reasons that people relapse because people try to do it cold turkey and it is so rough, it is so brutal that people end up turning back to the substance in order to avoid the rest of the withdrawal symptoms, all right? But here's the thing too, like, I don't know, it's, it's difficult, like, I am all about bringing more awareness to these subjects, such as mental health, such as addiction. And I try to be an optimist about these situations. Like at the end of the day, at the end of the day, regardless of Trisha Paytas as a whole, it has started a conversation. Like seeing people in my comment sections talking about their personal experience with um, opiate withdrawal with um, Suboxone or Methadone or Vivitrol or Naltrexone. Like seeing stories of hope in the comment section where people are talking about how long they've been clean. Or um, I, I saw somebody talk about like their father recently went to rehab. And I'm like, yes, that's awesome. So now we have a whole comment section of, you know, people getting pretty, pretty pissed off, but they're also sharing stories of hope. So like in that sense, I'm like, okay, cool. Something good, something positive came from this situation. You know what I mean? But it's, it's very difficult because I've been clean for almost seven years and I worked in a drug and alcohol treatment center for three years. Um, and like sometimes, sometimes even I, you know, believe people with addictions, right? Like one of the earliest stories I remember was at my sober living house, there was this dude there and he was having all sorts of erratic behavior and I had never been around anybody whose substance of choice was meth because here in Las Vegas, like the primary drugs back then when I was still using was like alcohol, cocaine and prescription meds, right? Like not a lot of people were doing meth here in Las Vegas. It's still not that high, but anyways, I got sober in Central California and I was, in that sober living with a bunch of recovering meth addicts, right? And there was this kid and he was acting really weird and erratic, like a little bit different, but I thought he just got like that pink cloud as we call it in recovery. I thought he was just in a great mood. So one night at our uh, our sober living house meeting, like he, he stops the meeting and he says that he wants to read us a poem, right? And he like reads the poem and I'm just sitting there, I'm like, that's dope. I'm like, this dude's getting clean. He's finding his creativity, his new passions in life and everything. I'm like, the poem wasn't that good, but he's, he's finding his path in sobriety, right? So like after the meeting, like some of my buddies were like, so what, what'd you think about his poem? I was like, I'm like, you know what? Good for him. Good for that guy. They're like, you know, he's really high on meth, right? I'm like, wait, what? They're like, yeah, man. Remember when we went into the garage the other day and he was asking how much money we thought he could get for that piano. Like this dude relapsed on meth. And I'm like, 
oh my word, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, you know, the next day he got kicked out of the sober living house. But anyways, anyways, even somebody with my, uh, like myself, who has a lot of experience with addiction and working with drug addicts and alcoholics, even I can be a little gullible to their antics. So anyways, anyways, at the end of the day, Please, 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 if you are somebody who is struggling with addiction or if you are somebody who is in recovery from addiction, like, know that there is hope. Remember to keep spreading hope. Our experiences greatly help anybody else out there who is currently struggling so they know that they never have to pick up a drink or drug again, even if they want to. All right, but anyways, I wish the best for Trisha Paytas and she gets into gear. She has been talking about going to therapy and all that stuff, so I hope the best for her, but I wanted to make the video to kind of address my last video and correct myself because new information is out, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And don't forget to go follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you like the channel, if you like what I'm doing here and want to figure out how you can support it, boom, click on that Patreon icon right there, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.